water sustainability a priority in the Pacific? Sir Polias Matane reflects on the last 40 years and highlights of last night's independent celebrations. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. A very good evening to you and welcome to Thursday's news. It's good to have your company again. Well, they promised a spectacular and indeed a spectacular it was. The main events of the independence celebrations in the nation's capital, Port Moresby, managed to thrill the 15,000 strong crowd who paid to watch the concert, which was also aired live on MTV. Sarah Alpong reports. The recently renovated Sir John Guy Stadium was again the center of attention as the concert began with the distinctive sounds of the Sangoma band. This haunting PNG music accompanied the air show over the stadium. Great to see the famous colors, red, black and gold, landing in the midst of everybody dressed here in red, black and gold as well. And the national colors make a triumphant yeah. landing here at the Sir John Guy Stadium. After that, the concert continued, which paid tribute to the old. And highlighted the current flavor of PNG music. A throwback to 16th September 1975 was an emotional affair for the stadium audience and those watching at home. One of the hosts of the MTV live broadcast, the legendary Roger Hawofa, could be heard trying to compose himself after this. All this emotion set the scene for the international special, Michael Lentz to Rock, who stayed true to their name. While MLTR may not be everyone's choice of music, from the audience's reaction in the stadium, it is safe to say they have fans in PNG. September 16, 2015 began with the raising of the flag on Independence Hill followed by the procession of the 400-year-old King James Bible to the Parliament House. After these official affairs, the sea of red, black and gold chose how to spend the rest of the day while waiting for the big event that evening. The festivities at Sir John Guy Stadium ended with a massive fireworks display. Out of a total budget of 25 million kina for independent celebrations, Port Mosby received 10 million kina, while the rest was shared among the 21 provinces. While we cannot confirm how much was raised yesterday during the concert, it is understood that all the money from the ticket sales will be shared among children's hospitals in the country. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. It truly was a spectacular event. Well, PNG's former Governor General, Sir Polias Matane, says the country hasn't made great strides in the exploitation of natural resources after 40 years of independence. His comments were centered around exploitation of natural resources by foreign developers who control the country's non-renewable sector. MTV's Edwin Fidelis reports from Kokopo. Apart from the usual colourful celebrations, the 16th of September every year is a time of evaluation and reflection by the people and the government on the state of developments in the country, concerns on the state of roads infrastructure, education and health services remained a topic of discussion 40 years on in Papua New Guinea. Those questions were put to the former PNG Governor-General Sir Polias Matane 
to obtain his views on the progress of developments in the country. If we are an independent country and now we have we have celebrated our 40th uh, uh, anniversary of our political independence, are we truly independent? Are we truly developing our nation so that each of us, each of us from the south, from the north, from the east and the west, and all over the whole country of Papua New Guinea, are we developing? Sir Poles Matane is one of many PNG politicians from East New Britain province who have been part of successive PNG governments over the years since independence. He was the first PNG ambassador to the U.S. who stood with Somare when the first PNG government was formed in 1975. This is the reality that I'm seeing today. We have to be very careful that if we, when we invite people from outside to come and help us in our economic and other kinds of development, we have to be very careful that the people whom we invite to come to our country would be honest people, would be people who would do the right things, not only for themselves, but for the people of this wonderful country of ours. The independence celebrations may have ended, but the ripples of the significant day will be remembered over the next 12 months. But some, otherwise many Papua New Guineans, still remain skeptical about the progress of developments in the country in many years to come. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. Like every other province, Matang also celebrated the country's 40 years since independence in style. However, the people were reminded of the law and order problems that are on the rise in the province during the speeches. The Matang MP and Minister for Petroleum, Nixon Philip Duban, partly blames the Matang police for the escalating crime rate. The celebration was on and the speeches, apart from the independence talk, was hot on the rise of the crime rate in the province. Speaking at the ceremony at the Laiwaden Oval, the Medang MP and Minister for Petroleum and Energy, Nixon Philip Duban, and the Medang Governor, Jim Cass, has again reminded the people that curbing the law and order issue is part of their responsibilities. Time for mama, papa, you play go hide him or pick him up, you play outside, you walk in trouble. You walk around, make him trouble, you go big man. When you cannot own up as a parent to give it, give your son and daughters to the police or to the law abiding agencies, how can we fight him crime long made in town? We can manage it about community leadership, family leadership, council leadership, we're all in order. The minister came down hard on the Medang police force, saying they are partly to be blamed for the escalating crime rate. All police coordination point blue are very weak. Very weak. No simple thing as roadblocks. No other spot checks, no foot beat. Until now we are the PBC and doctor, PBC and administrator. That's your job, PSC, you failed. This is a coordination point, PSC coordination point, oppression center has failed. That's why I don't know what I want We want coordination. It's a small province, small town, effective national police, and the better commander block. Minister Duban also mentioned that he, as the member for Medang Open, will evict those communities who continue to cause problems and disturb public peace. People are taking note, continue stoning, continue interruption of the general public. I, as the member for Medang, I will call for eviction on that corner. Governor Kass, on the other hand, admitted that members of his government have lost focus along the way. People along the way, when the government and public service long in, he saw also the road, me play behind him, come in up now, he know he's simple road. Plenty of long me play, he walk long, walk hard, straight, long come up long this landmark today. That's all, plenty of long me play, he walk long lose focus, now he walk long less, number of long road, or number of long road. Rachel Shise, National MTV News, Medang. On PNG's 40th independence anniversary, the much-debated 400-year-old King James Bible was escorted to the House of Parliament yesterday. 
Hundreds of Christians accompanied the Bible to Parliament to hand it over to Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and Speaker of Parliament Theo Zurinur. The Parliament's gate was jammed as hundreds rushed in to witness the ceremony. They say the Bible will be a light to the House to guide leaders in all decision making and put PNG forward for the next 40 years. Church leaders said it's time Papua New Guinea let God be at the front for all discussions and development agendas for the country. As the rest of the country celebrated independence, former students of Manu Secondary who graduated four years after independence in 1979 have given back to their old school. The group, called the Manu Secondary School Class of 79, renovated the school's rundown library building, donated 10 computers, and will be filling the shelves with 20,000 library books sourced from Australia. A woman hit by a moving vehicle, also drought in Hanganofi and the Pacific Water Conference here in Port Moresby. Those stories and much more on National MTV News when we come back. Stay with us. Good to have you back with the news. A road accident has happened in one of Lay's busiest roads. A woman died this morning after she was being hit by a fast-moving vehicle along Lay Speedway Road. The unidentified woman, aged between 40 to 50, was hit by a moving PMV bus when she was attempting to cross the road. An eyewitness at the scene said the woman died instantly after the accident occurred. The incident happened at around 10 a.m. this morning. Police were called to the site, but the PMV bus driver and bus crew had fled the scene. The bus has been seen impounded to the Lay Police Station. Suspects have been identified by Lay Police, but are still on the run. More sensibility and patience are keys to better understanding and compiling a police report on victims of sexual assault. The two criteria will place officers, police officers that is, in a better position to investigate assault cases involving minors. These points were highlighted by Detective Sergeant Michelle Harris from the Australian Federal Police. Secondary victimisation. Detective Michelle and a team of Queensland Police are conducting a workshop in Port Moresby that targets improving interviewing skills that are applicable when speaking to children who are victims of sexual assaults. Excellent. They're learning new techniques and they've learnt some new theory that they weren't aware of before. And yesterday was a very important day for Papua New Guinea and we had still 100% attendance in class, which is a very strong indication of how valuable the training is and how much the participate, participants are learning. Child abuse cases, particularly sexual penetration, sits on top of the discussion tables in almost all police stations nationwide. It remains a growing concern for most communities and a challenge for the police and community development departments to address at least on a daily basis. At least 15 child abuse cases are reported to the Lay Metropolitan Command in a month, while an average stand in East New Britain. The Pekinini Witness Workshop that commenced on Monday aims to teach police officers on how best to speak to minors and get the desired outcome they need to compile police witness statements. Getting a good result in treating the victims with care and consideration more so than now and also in relation to gathering stronger evidence for the future for briefs of evidence that go to court. With such training in place, the facilitators say the police officers will better communicate with the victims and present quality police reports in courts. Takla Gunga, National MTV News. People in the Hanganofi district of Eastern Highlands have blamed the heat wave from El Nino for the increased occurrences of fires. It comes as people struggle to find water and food in savannah grassland, er grassland areas in the district. Yesterday, during the country's 40th independence anniversary, relief supplies were delivered to places affected by the dry spells, whilst the other half was given out today. The heat wave in the Hanganofi district has caused damage to food crops and depleted water in tanks, decreasing the size of creeks and rivers. People are also taking advantage of the dry spell to burn grass along the valleys. 
90% of the Hanganofi district is made up of savanna grassland. Now these are the areas severely affected by the El Nino. District authorities have advised people against storing oil, gas and petrol that may explode and cause fires. Some families in the district have lost homes after it caught on fire. Tony, seen on these crutches, built a permanent home over the years when he could still walk. Three days ago, his home burnt down after flames erupted from within. The cause of the fire is yet unknown, but he has blamed the heat wave that has gripped the district. People are now blaming the increased occurrences of fires on the El Nino, but that can't be proved. The district is helping those who have been genuinely affected. Oh, you know, clear one name something, but then research for this drought you make at all. Today, me play like distribute to Kaike and like distribute to this area because I'm more Kunai. Yesterday, hanging off the MP Robert Atiafa personally supervised the transportation of relief supplies on tipper trucks to the district. He has been part of the assessment group going around the district. Half a million kina worth of relief supplies have reached the district starting yesterday during independence celebrations. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News. People in the Yalibu Urban LLG of Southern Islands Province are calling for more disaster rations. Councillor Kewakera from Kendagal says despite the arrival of three more container trucks with rations this week, the food supply is insufficient. This, is, this includes areas of Yalibu Urban, Yalibu Basin, Imbongu Propa, Kuare and Kagwa Erave. Complaints were also raised by locals that people not affected are also receiving food rations. People are now calling on the National Disaster Office and the government to address this issue. Pacific Islands ministers attending the 8th Pacific Water Conference have all agreed to push the agenda of water sustainability in the Pacific. Today, they signed the ministerial declaration on the water development at the closing of the water conference. They will push the water agenda through the Pacific Islands Forum. The final day of the 8th Pacific Water and Waste Management Conference ended on a positive note with state ministers committing to address water problems in the region. Most say the growing population, climate change and urban growth in the region has left water utilities struggling. It will take us all, we have to walk side by side to ensure that future generations have access to sufficient clean water. Eight ministers signed a ministerial declaration for water development in the region. Water PNG CEO Raka Taviri Jr. says the exchange of ideas in discussion sessions in water technology, asset management, sustainable water and non-revenue water will see changes in how water utilities operate. This is uh, uh, the opportunity uh, to network and to partner and to share those uh, experiences in water and wastewater issues in the Pacific. It's a big achievement for the Pacific Water and Waste Association who has been struggling to make Pacific governments realize the threat of water scarcity in the region. That all the ministers that attended the conference have endorsed and a push to, for the Pacific Water and Waste Association to become a member of the crop, which is the, the regional uh, um, body that looks after all the infrastructures. This year's event is the first to involve Pacific government ministers. Vanuatu will host the 9th Pacific Water and Waste Management Conference next year in Port Vila. Jagla Pava Jr. National MTV News. Landowner companies in Papua New Guinea should not be just rent collectors, but rather become joint venture partners in business. Governor for Southern Islands Province, William Poe, made the comments at the recent opening of the New Look PNG owned Pearl Pacific Resort in Fiji. Mr. Poe stressed that landowner companies and businesses in PNG need to take the lead in business and investments. Mr. Poe was part of the PNG delegation that witnessed the opening of the New Look Pearl Pacific Resort with its brand new 132 guest rooms. 
As the political head of the Southern Highlands province and of those from Petroleum Resources Kutubu, Mr. Powi recalled the disapproval by few members of the public when the resort was first acquired by MRDC in 2012. When we first uh, acquired the Pell Hotel in Fiji, there were a lot of uh, negativity, a lot of uh, pessimism, and now with the investment of 85 million uh, dollars. You can see that it is one of the world-class hotel facilities. The hotel is owned by MRDC, the trustee company of the landowner groups Petroleum Resources Kutubu, Mineral Resources Star Mountains, and Mineral Resources Octedi No. 2 in partnership with the state. They are from the Southern Highlands, Gulf, and Western provinces. Mr. Powi stressed the importance of landowners becoming joint venture partners with the private sector in business rather than taking the back seat as just rent collectors. We should be joint venture with private sector investors that are coming. We shouldn't be collecting rents. Why do we, we, it's about time we send the, the signal correct. We must be joint venture partners. We must set the scene and determine our future. We cannot forever collect rent. We've, had, we've been rent collectors for too long. We must be in the front seat to drive our destiny. With the resort's ideal location in Fiji, where tourism is on an exponential growth, the shareholders are looking forward to strong dividends. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. And now let's check out the finance news. The Kina closed 15 points lower at 0.3535 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, our Kina was trading at 0.3460 US dollars, 0.4770 Australian dollars, 0.3029 Euro, and 41.34 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold and copper closed the day lower, while coffee and cocoa closed the day higher. Copper closed higher as well, while palm oil and palm oil closed lower. And finally, on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 369 points higher, the ASX closed at 3 points higher, and the All Ordinaries closed at 2 points higher as well. You're watching National and TV News tonight. Coming up after the break, stories making headlines overseas. Stay tuned. Good to have you back with National MTV News. Turning overseas now, Chile's President Michelle Bachelet has confirmed three dead following an 8.3 magnitude earthquake that struck yesterday. Chile's disaster alert system failed to warn citizens of the earthquake, which damaged homes and buildings, injuring several. Hundreds that survived the earthquake were engulfed by tsunamis that followed the earthquake after not being alerted of the emergency. The Chilean government had initially underestimated the level of damage, declining international aid, resulting in a delay of aid assistance. Meanwhile, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center is expecting tsunami waves of 1 to 2 meters high in French Polynesia. Although decades of research on earthquake predictions have proven some accurate results, earthquakes remain to this day essentially unpredictable. Korean researchers recently figured out a more accurate method of predicting earthquakes, measuring changing levels of the radioactive gas called thoron. The researchers suggested that unusually large thoron levels measured throughout February in 2011 predicted Japan's 9.0 magnitude Tohoku earthquake the following month. Traces of thoron can be found in earthquake-prone areas, but Seoul National University researchers have proposed a dual analysis of thoron and its larger components, radon, to gauge a more accurate prediction. The Japanese parliament continues to debate the passing of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's controversial security bill that allows Japanese troops to fight abroad. Public outcry has also resulted as Japanese citizens argue that it violates their right to live in peace. In one of many political battles over the security bills, parliament directors overseeing parliament's procedures clashed this morning. They moved to censure the head of parliament directors, Yoshitada Konoike, who had sought to move to vote without debating the issue. 
Konoike promptly stepped down and delegated his position to Liberal Democratic Party colleague Masahisa Sato. A scuffle ensued as opposition party members protested the move. Tens of thousands of people gathered in front of Japan's parliament yesterday and today to protest against Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's security bills. If passed, it would allow Japanese troops to fight abroad for the first time since World War II. Many who support Japan's post-war pacifist constitution are concerned that Abe's move will increase the risk of Japan being dragged into armed conflicts and thus endanger Japanese people's right to live in peace. Abe's ruling bloc has an upper house majority, but major opposition parties have vowed to prevent a vote before parliament disperses on September 27 by using delaying tactics such as a no confidence and central motions. Tokana Hasav. While well, Papua New Guinea wasn't the only country celebrating independence this week, Mexico celebrated 205 years of independence with a bang today with a military parade previewing the nation's military might. The nation secured its independence from Spain in 1821 after almost two centuries of colonization. The parade was held in a historic center in Mexico City and included low-flying Air Force jets and hundreds of soldiers marching in formation in full military gear. Mexico's military manpower is around 72 million and it is mandatory for citizens to join military service at the age of 18, resulting in over 2 million recruits annually. Since Mexican President Pena Nieto came into office in late 2012, Mexico has purchased around 3.5 billion US dollars worth of military equipment. Well, National MTV News continues with True Guy Sports. That's coming up next, and we'll bring you news on the Intrust Super Cup, including NRL. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Welcome to True Kai Sports. After a brilliant 44-18 win against East Tigers last weekend, Ipswich Jets has now booked a spot in Sunday's Intrust Super Cup preliminary final against the Hunters. Queensland Rugby League's expansion of the game to include PNG has been a major boost to the code. Thousands of Hunters fans are expected to descend on Wynnum in Brisbane for the match. The winner will meet Townsville Blackhawks in the grand final at Suncorp Stadium the following Sunday. An unexpected loss for the minor premiers, Roosters and a scratchy win for Des Hasler's Bulldogs. That is the equation that now leads to an enticing semi-final clash at Allianz Stadium tomorrow. The two sides will lock horns in Friday night football with Roosters co-captain Mitchell Pearce back from a hamstring injury for a must-win clash against the side that seems to bring their best in the finals. The Roosters have much preferred a week off to rest up and get everything right, but they're left with having to do things the hard way. Pearce have been named at halfback and will need to pass a fitness test on his hamstring later in the week. It pushes Jackson Hastings, who was one of his side's best last week, to the bench and Sui Matagi to an extended bench. If Pierce is ruled out, they will expect Hastings to start and Matagi to play. Bulldogs coach Des Hessler is something of a September specialist. It has been proven that sides coached by him have never failed to progress to a grand final appearance after winning in the first week of the finals. It has happened five times so far with Manly in 2007 to 2008 and 2011 and with Canterbury in 2012 and 2014 for a two out of five strike rate on the big day. Sean Lane has scored! Sean Lane has put a four-pointer together! Hesler has named an unchanged side. Lloyd Parrott was added to an extended bench, presumably as cover for Frank Fritchard. But with Fritchard successfully attacking his case against a Dragon's contact charge at the judiciary, on Tuesday night, expect an unchanged side on Friday night. Shane, Soroya National, MTV Sports. Well, True Guy Sports continues after this break. Stay tuned for the details. True Guy Sports. 
Good to have you back with Trukai Sports. The Regional Athletics Championships are set to go ahead in Port Moresby, Kaviang and Garoka during the third term school holidays. First will be the Southern Region Championships in Port Moresby from the 18th to the 20th of September. Events will be conducted in the under 14, under 16, under 18 and the open divisions. The New Guinea Islands Regional Championship will be held in Kaviang on the 21st to the 23rd of September. The Highlands and Momasa Regional Championships will be conducted at the National Sports Institute from the 24th to the 26th. The Chief Executive of San Francisco 49ers, Jed York, believes Jared Hayne is an inspiration to the American Football League. York has been reluctant to speak about Hayne to avoid placing unnecessary pressure on the rookie, but after his debut on Monday night, Hayne has been praised for his accomplishments. The former NRL star's debut didn't go to plan, fumbling and turning over possession. While he's been in direct competition with other players on the 49ers roster, those same players have gone out of their way to help the Australian with his transition to the foreign sport. And in AFL, the under-14 Binatang saw through their final run this afternoon in Port Moresby. While most of their preparations have slipped under the radar, they are hopeful to better their fifth place finish this last year. This year's team sees 19 new faces from Port Moresby, Lay, Kimbe and Kaviang. The Binatangs will depart tomorrow and compete in the Queensland State Championships from the 18th to the 25th of this month. Well, True Guy Sports wraps up on that note. The weather details coming up after these short messages. Stay with us. True Sports. True Kai Sports. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in southern region. Dry although cloudy at times, expected in the nation's capital. Fine weather in Alatau, Daru and Poponeta. Cloudy weather expected in Kerama. In Momase, Lay City and Medang, mostly fine. Cloudy weather expected in Wewak and Vanimore. In the New Guinea Islands, thundery showers expected in Lorengau and Kaviang. Kokopo and Rabaul to look forward to brief showers. Kimben Buka, cloudy with possible showers. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen to look forward to cloudy weather with chances of some rain, while Kundiawa, Garoka, Mendi, and Wabeg to look forward to cloudy weather. Forecast for small ships looking at waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Taru to Kiwai Island, seas of 1.5 to 2.5 meters, waters east of Kiwai Island, Kerama, Yule Island through to Hood Point, Samara Island, eastern and western Milan Bay Islands, including Cape Vogel and Finchafen, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 meters, waters of Finchafen, including Vitya Strait through to Siasi Island to Long Island, Medang and Bogia, New Island and Bogia, Seas of 2 meters to 2.5 meters, waters west of Bogia, Wewak to Aitape, Vanimore, and the southern PNG Indonesian border, seas of 0.5 meters to 1.3 meters, Manus and its western group of islands, 1.5 to 2.5 meters, and lastly, waters of Bougainville, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 meters. And now let's take a look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas. Coral and Solomon Seas, seas moderate with southeast winds at 15 to 20 knots. Bismarck Sea, seas rather rough with southeast winds at 20 to 25 knots. And lastly, Pacific Ocean seas moderate to rather rough with southeast winds at 15 to 25 knots. 
Well, that's been the news this Thursday, the 17th of September 2015. On behalf of the news crew, I'm Tokana Asavi Jr. Thanks for your company. You take care and stay happy. Good night.